There are uh, one billion unemployed today in the world. One in seven people on the planet are out of jobs. This is why job creation, particularly job creation for young people, is the most pressing political issue for all governments in any country. But where are the sources of jobs? The main sources of jobs are in self-employment, in entrepreneurship, and in the development of small business. Large companies and government, public sector, are shedding jobs. Are shed they have to cut jobs. Big companies, because they have to concentrate on their core business, and the government, because they are all indebted. They have unsustainable debt. And this implies that they have to reduce their public workforce, which in the past, large firms and public sector have been a source of jobs. They are no longer. Uh, but uh, for this uh, flourishing of uh, entrepreneurship, uh, small business, that create jobs, uh, there is um, a need to uh, create the appropriate ecosystem that can favor that. Um, and this implies major structural reforms. Without structural reforms, you will not develop the, the job creation machine that uh, is entrepreneurship and small business development. This, uh, uh, most of uh, the economy uh, take uh, in OECD countries is made of the service sector. The service sector represents 70% of the jobs in Europe, for more than uh, three quarters of the jobs in Europe. But the, the way in which the services are delivered uh, are delivered badly. And this is where there are plenty of hindrances in the way in which services are delivered. And this is one of the main reasons why Europe is lagging behind America. Not the only one. But the structural reforms uh, uh, implies uh, an adaptation to the changing realities. Take energy. Uh, already, you, the cost of energy in Europe overall uh, used to be 30% higher than in the United States. Now, with the shale gas revolution, the cost of energy in the United States will be 60, 70% cheaper in the United States than in, uh, in Europe. In the, in the United States, uh, President Obama, when he was a candidate uh, in the first uh, uh, election, he was saying, the main objective of my presidency will be to stop the, the present mechanism whereby we borrow $700 billion a year from China to give it to, to Saudi Arabia. And this is, and this is actually is stopped, but has stopped thanks to new technology. Uh, the, fracking technologies that enabled to exploit the shale gas. But demography is also a, a, huge, uh, a huge challenge, a new uh, reality. But the, in the service sector, tourism, travel, and leisure represents a, a big chunk of the service sector and the most dynamic in the United States uh, and Europe, 
about uh, one third of new jobs are generated in the tourism, travel, and leisure um, uh, and entertainment uh, sector. This is why it's important what, uh, what my colleague uh, Alain Dupera said about uh, the creative industries. Mm. Uh, the tourism is uh, uh, also a very important export industry. Uh, many uh, politicians don't understand that uh, for export uh, they intend goods, but uh, a, a, a big part of the export is made by, by tourism uh, uh, and related uh, activities. Uh, in 35% uh, worldwide, 35% of the uh, uh, exporting services is generated by tourism and travel. So that's, uh, this is uh, what uh, the, uh, uh, the, the challenge. The, uh, the, the tourism sector is largely made of small, medium-sized enterprises. In, um, uh, in a country like uh, Austria, for instance, 99% uh, of uh, uh, tourism establishment are made of SMEs. And 90% of the tourism establishment have less than 10 employees. This is the reality. You see the Hilton, the Sheraton, the, a few big uh, um, uh, uh, industries, um, uh, companies, but uh, the reality is that one of the major shifts in the uh, tourism uh, uh, sector is the fact that over the last 20 years, 40% uh, of the hotel uh, of the hotels in the United States have been taken over by Indians. And Indians are from just one region, from one state, Gujarat. So the Gujarati, the Patels, have taken all the all the motels, all the small hotels, 40% of the hotels in America today is in the hands of Indians. <laughs> I find this uh, a rather uh, striking uh, development a phenomenon. Uh, this, um, this, uh, this is why is, uh, we think that uh, uh, the uh, tourism sector is uh, a sector that uh, uh, has uh, a, 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 a great importance uh, in the field of uh, uh, globalization because it uh, encompasses every uh, tourism activity is at the same time global because thanks to internet, thanks to uh, the the, the new technologies, uh, every small uh, location um, touristic activities can be, uh, can contact the, the whole planet. But at the same time, it's very local because what uh, the tourism generate is uh, jobs and economic activities in the surrounding uh, uh, community. The, um, there is uh, uh, a, a very important uh, uh, transformation that is uh, 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 due these uh, uh, days in uh, um, relation to the fact that uh, a country, a continent uh, like Europe is uh, um, is affected by uh, the problem of uh, aging, of uh, aging at the same and at the same time of uh, lack of capacity to generate jobs uh, today. Aging because uh, the 
the, the, the difference uh, between Europe and the United States is that uh, uh, in 2015, uh, so 36 years uh, down the, uh, the road, uh, the America will, uh, grow, will move from 300 million inhabitants to 400 million inhabitants. Europe will go from 550 to 450. And even if Europe would attract, I doubt, with the mood in Europe, attract, but would need, attract 100 million uh, immigrants over the next, uh, over the next uh, uh, 36 years, the situation would not uh, change much. The, the ratio between uh, pension, the ratio pensioner to worker will, uh, which is uh, today one to four, will, uh, one uh, to four will, uh, will be reduced to one to two and will be uh, unsustainable. So that's uh, while uh, the, uh, today in Europe there is, um, there is uh, uh, the need uh, for the, the, the lack of uh, jobs, the, in the future there will be a shortage of jobs. This is why it's urgent for Europe to put as many people as possible into work, and uh, particularly women. You know that it has been calculated that um, uh, over the last 30 years, uh, the entry, the massive entry of women in the labor market in the United States and in entrepreneurship, because in the United States, one in three new business is generated, is created by, uh, by women, have contributed to 20% of the economic growth in the uh, United States. So this is uh, also uh, an area uh, in which uh, Europe is uh, lagging uh, behind. But uh, so uh, the, uh, we see that uh, Immigrant entrepreneurship is, uh, um, uh, is uh, the, the, the main point of entry for immigrant entrepreneurship is uh, tourism and tourism related activities uh, because uh, the barriers of entry are very small, very low. Uh, you don't need big capital. Uh, and uh, the uh, this uh, sector is a sort of a training camp in entrepreneurship because there is a, the best way to learn entrepreneurship is by doing. It's not by accident that all the so-called flagship entrepreneurs, Michael Dell, Bill Gates, uh, um, uh, um, uh, Richard Branson, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, they have all created the companies before the age of 20, between 16 and 19 years old. At 21, you are already old <laughs> to create a successful business. And they were often a school dropout. They have never been graduated. They have created high-tech companies, but without any technological uh, um, uh, 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 diploma. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that I find this uh, fantastic. <laughs> this is fantastic, and uh, the and uh, and uh, the 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 what uh, research has shown that. Um, in, in Europe, but not only in Europe, you see the, uh, the Obst and Gemüse, the Turkish uh, the Obst and Gemüse, the, uh, 
euh, My Beautiful Londres in Londres by the Pakistani, l'Arabe du coin à Paris, uh, et everywhere you see that uh, the immigrants are more pro, prone to engage into self-employment because uh, and uh, they are more resilient and they are capable to face better uh, difficult circumstances. And they are able to move then the, from uh, tourism related business activity to other business activity. And uh, at the end of the day, entrepreneurship is uh, the best way to build uh, an inclusive society. And uh, this is why we we say that entrepreneurship is a business for all and it's a way to make a more uh, inclusive and cohesive society in all over the world in every country. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very thought-provoking presentation. I'm sure that uh, you have raised many questions in the audience. So I think we have one here. Oh, nobody is doing the lights. Uh, could you guys turn on Hello. the lights? Hello. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hi. That was amazing. Um, I'm a proud college dropout at 19, and I'm currently an advisor to the government of Puerto Rico in economic development. So I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I have two concerns with uh, entrepreneurship and um, self-employment. And I'm dealing with that issue right now because in our statistics of employment, and actually I was in a meeting with the Berlin government on Monday and they have the same issue. Uh, employment in the small and medium self-employed companies is not taken into consideration in the statistics. So if you're not employed by a formal company, then those numbers are not being shown in the statistics of, of the so-called traditional employment. So that's one question, how do, I, do we address that? When I talked to Ingrid Vita at the Project Zukunft in the Berlin, uh, they said that they're working on some matrix to do that, but they're very informal, but they, they, they are very aware of it. My second question is, I'm very worried about say, uh, retirement. Because if you're self-employed, most of the time you're not thinking of putting money away. You're not thinking of, uh, you don't have a pension plan. So that's another issue that could uh, backlash after people get older and, 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 and if they didn't do their job at being responsible with their own uh, uh, income. So I would like your comments on those two questions. Well, first of all, on um, uh, self-employment, uh, Self-employment uh, uh, often is, uh, doesn't come into the statistics. And so what? Uh, the statistics uh, uh, don't, uh, don't tell the truth. Don't, uh, and those who believe too much on statistics uh, uh, the, the world, the reality is much more complex. This is why uh, econometrics, mathematics, economics uh, has proven uh, uh, all its limits with the current crisis. Nobody saw <laughs> with all the equations that are because, of, and this is why. This is why um, also the OECD has uh, made uh, its uh, mea culpa. Uh, because um, how it works, uh, the, the statistics, uh, the, the forecast, economic forecast, uh, you take the past trend and you extrapolate, and you take uh, two fixed points, the price of uh, dollar and the price of uh, oil. If there is a change in one of these prices, everything <laughs> goes wrong. So, and in any case, it's an extrapolation of past tendencies. 
but the, the life and the reality changes. And this is why you have to take everything with the, a, a, a pinch of soul, pinch of soul. Then self-employment is uh, very important. We have uh, uh, seen, because there are a number uh, of countries that have allowed the program to foster so-called to transform the unemployed into self-employed. Um, and this program has shown that even if someone who has engaged into some form of entrepreneurship uh, doesn't, uh, at the end of the day, create his own company, what he does is that he finds by 98% he finds a good job. Why? Because when you engage into an entrepreneurial activity, you, you develop the problem-solving uh, attitude and technique and reflex that are what every employer wants from his uh, collaborators, uh, from his staff. Nobody wants, uh, this is why there is, uh, for instance, also the OECD, nobody wants a stagiaire, an uh, internship. Because, uh, I don't want someone who says, well, how I do it? What do I do? And, uh, nah, then you have to, uh, to try to solve yourself uh, the, the problem. The proper staff says, there is this problem. I think that uh, you have, uh, uh, the solution could be A or B. That is... Uh, uh, the, the proper uh, uh, employee. So that's, um, that's one thing. Uh, and then uh, when you talk about self-employment, uh, you have to make the distinction between uh, among countries. One thing is uh, in Germany, another thing is in Brazil, I don't know, in, uh, in India, because uh, uh, if you go, many developing countries are characterized by the fact uh, that uh, the uh, 50, 60, 80 percent of the economy is uh, informal. And you have uh, this uh, vast informal economy and uh, a protected uh, uh, state-owned enterprises uh, employment, this is under development. When you have a, a protected aristocracy uh, in, uh, uh, in state-owned enterprises and in the public sector versus when you have, uh, we could say, even in Germany, you have the Beamten, this uh, civil servant uh, that have, uh, is the untouchable, uh, they are new mandarins, untouchable uh, uh, um, position. And uh, they are not uh, the most uh, dynamic uh, part of the German economy. <laughs> uh, and even in the public sector, you have this distinction between a Beamten and an Gestelten with second rate. You see? And then there is the private sector. The private sector and the Mittelstand, they are those who generate uh, the, the wealth of, uh, and the employment. So this, uh, so the other question was? That's fine. Okay. Hi, my name is Maria, and I come from Spain, 22 years old. So I'm in this frame of people who are unemployed right now, and it's not getting better in the moment. And basically, my question is if there's hope for people like me. Um, I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't have a big idea. I have a bachelor's degree, which apparently is negative now. <laughs> and I'm leaning towards my master's next year. And I don't think I'm going to find a job in Spain in the near future. I mean, I, I've given up on this idea. But I would like to go back one day and maybe. And you, know, you should, Maria. You should. I should build my own. <laughs> because you should, because Maria. <laughs> Maria.
Kariya. You are wrong. You are wrong. Thanks God you are wrong. You are wrong because uh, last year Spain came out of recession, came out of recession. For the first time since uh, 1986, uh, uh, Spain had uh, a surplus in the balance of payment, thanks to the fact that uh, 2013 has been a record year for Spanish tourism with 60.6 million uh, visitors. That uh, has uh, the, in Spain, tourism represents 10% of GDP and 10% uh, uh, of employment in the Ca Canary, in the um, uh, Balear uh, and Canary Islands, it represents 30% of employment. Uh, and GDP. Um, uh, tourism, the problem, uh, tourism is uh, a big uh, uh, industry in, uh, in, uh, in Spain. And uh, you have, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, an industry that, uh, of course, uh, Spain has uh, to adjust to, because uh, it's uh, tourism is uh, a, commodity tourism, These, uh, it's, uh, it's mass tourism. They have developed uh, the so-called, what the economists call la costa del concrete, la costa del sol. <laughs> la costa del concrete because they have built uh, too much, because uh, they ha it has been uh, an industry dominated by, uh, by real estate developers. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, uh, I think that Spain, Spain has uh, 800 million, 800,000 Romanians working in Spain today. 700,000 uh, Equatorians. They do because uh, there are also in Spain there are a lot of jobs that Spaniards refuse because in Spain universities, as well as in France and in Italy, and the, the function of Spain has been of university has been social elevator to allow the because Spain, as well as France and Italy, they refuse the dual system because the dual system German style because in Germany you don't have youth unemployment, nor in Switzerland, nor in Austria, nor in Denmark, nor in the Netherlands. All countries where, at the age of 10, teachers and families decide if you go to the abitur universities or you go to the professional school and at the age of 18 you go out of the house and you have a job. This, this is considered auto teutonic, uh, anti-democratic, because in Spain, parents believe wants, uh, don't want to give uh, an orientation to kids. Parents say, well, uh, uh, what do you, uh, kid? I don't know, he will do what he likes. <laughs> he will do what he likes. <laughs> And this way, at the age of 30, they still don't know what they want. <laughs> so the problem, the problem of unemployment in Spain is, is largely, I consider it's uh, generated uh, partly by uh, the, the culture of Dr. Spock and Sigmund Freud that uh, <laughs> that uh, have uh, induced uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, tender attitude whereby uh, parents want to be friends with the kids and want to give up the function of parents. And that is the result. But in any case, Maria, trust me, <laughs> trust me, Spain is a fantastic country. There are a lot of people, there are, uh, uh, I know plenty of Italians uh, that have found a job and they moved uh, to Spain still today. <laughs> you can't believe it. I can't give you the name and addresses.
Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Taru from India. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, moreover Europe is tending towards entrepreneurship, SMEs and tourism because they need to generate jobs or is it a long-term model for sustainable development for them? Uh, or to create jobs or? Uh, or to create jobs because it is the need of the day today or is it a long-term uh, development model that they're working on that uh, these sectors can uh, be sustainable and strong to support the economy in future as well? Both, both things. Uh, I think that uh, in any case, uh, uh, there is uh, people that um, uh, used to go to a business school uh, and uh, they wanted, uh, because they wanted to become managers of uh, big companies. Uh, big companies need uh, less, uh, uh, and less uh, this, uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, skills. Uh, there is uh, a, um, the, the, um, the way to um, respond to the need for a job is uh, that uh, is in uh, uh, entrepreneurship. A lot of people, because entrepreneurship should, uh, is, uh, is uh, something that has to be uh, taught more in, uh, not in business schools, but in uh, scientific uh, and uh, in, in any other uh, profession, because uh, you, if you are uh, study architecture, veterinary, you, you have to, to become your own entrepreneur if you are an artist. Look at, the, take an artist uh, today. Uh, an artist uh, has to be its own uh, uh, promoter, entrepreneur. Uh, um, that's, uh, that if you uh, do not uh, invent yourself, uh, do not, uh, um, uh, you, you, you don't uh, try to invent yourself. Uh, I don't know, I have a, uh, my niece, for instance, uh, 23 years uh, old, um, wanted to make a movie uh, with the Kickstarter uh, this uh, summer in July. She put it uh, on the, with the crowdfunding. She raised uh, in uh, 10 days uh, the 15,000 pounds uh, she needed uh, to do, she works uh, for the BBC, she, uh, to do this film, and she sold it to, to the BBC. <laughs> so that's, uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, but you have to invent yourself. I think that uh, that is, uh, this uh, widespread, the flourishing of uh, new ideas. Uh, Maria, I, I don't like when you say, when you say, I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm not, uh, I'm finishing, uh, because uh, you still think uh, with the logic of the time of study and the time of work. I'm now doing my, master of my PhD and so on, and you, you end up, you, you want to do a PhD, and you end up as a, an unemployed academic, what it is called, because, because I was recently in Norway, and I discovered that there are 8,000 PhDs unemployed, because of the market they don't need all those 30 years old PhDs. The, 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 point, the point is that in the Netherlands, for instance, that has one of the lowest youth unemployment rate in Europe, um, I discovered that 65% of youngsters at the age of 14 during summer, don't go to holidays. They do, they have a work experience. Uh, but often, even in the third sector, in the non-profit voluntary sector. But that uh, gives you this, uh, the same self-employment uh, uh, attitudes that are much wanted by any employer. 
So you, we are in the world in which we have to study and work all the time. This is why I say that universities are outmoded, out of universities in the way as the factories of diplomas are, are, uh, don't make sense anymore. If you, uh, Thomas Friedman uh, described the, 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 universe, the, the new model of university, the University of Ben Gurion in the Negev, as in Israel, as the oil well of Israel. Because uh, it's a new model of university whereby it's not like uh, in the, 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 the old uh, industrial society uh, university where you had on one side you have the faculty of medicine, then the faculty of uh, architecture, then uh, uh, <laughs> uh, economics, and so there they are all together, all the disciplines, professors and students, and from this uh, encounter and clash between different cultures and different disciplines, you had a great uh, variety of new innovations, even military innovation. But Israel has become number one in the world on patents for medical devices, for instance. And you know, Israel, seven million inhabitants, has more high-tech companies listed on the NASDAQ, the high-tech stock market in New York, than whole of Europe of 500 million inhabitants. Israel, seven million, has more companies. Because, because Israel is smart, smart in, in looking at new ways. We in Europe, we are seated. And we are too much backward looking. So, wake up. Despiértate! Despiértate, Maria!